Hello my darlings, it's Zui here and today we are going to reread My Sexy Delinquent Boyfriend, which is the story that I've wrote during Pride Month. Happy Pride! Anyways, uh, so this one will be a male listener, just a heads up. Uh, and as per always, my rereads are basically second drafts, so if you enjoyed the first one, you will definitely enjoy this one as well. But before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, you can even dislike if you want, and watch the video until the end. This is the best way you can support me, this is how you ensure that YouTube pays me a little bit more money, and this is how you improve my standing in the algorithm, which is the most important thing, because hey, you want more people to watch my videos, don't you? Anyways, if you're new here and think I'm worth it, please hit the bell icon after subscribing to join my beautiful darling doll army. Lastly, if you have any fan art that you want to draw or show me, I have a Discord, you're free to join it and show it to me. And if you want to support me more directly, I have a Patreon and a merch store, both links are down in the description. Please support me and my gacha addiction, please, I want Ning One and Kiki, like holy shit, Jesus Christ, I want these two. Anyways, Let's get right into the story. You had met Shoto in elementary school. He was a somewhat late bloomer when it came to his quirk. So you and your friends at the time took up bullying him. It was fun. Until one late evening you found yourself alone with him at a river close to your school. You were skipping your last two classes and had decided to take a nap. You were awoken by loud splashing. Shoto must have not seen you as he threw rocks into the water, with an expression of both joy and frustration. What are you doing here, twerp? You barked at the defenseless boy, who immediately shrieked. I... I'm sorry, I... You stomped towards him. Todoroki whimpered, as he looked down on him. What are you doing here, twerp? You repeated. M my my d dad can pick me up, so uh, I, I'm waiting for him. He stuttered. P Please don't hurt me, cried Shoto. You crossed your arms. You do realize if I wanted to hurt you, saying, Please don't hurt me, does pretty much nothing. Todoroki only sniffled in response. So what do you do, twerp? You barked at him. With an intimidated shudder, he replied. I'm trying to skip stones, but they just sink. You looked at the small rock the boy was holding and you sighed. Wrong stone. Don't you know anything? You walked over to the water and turned around. If you throw me in, you're dead. He nodded and gave a quick okay. Then you bent down and searched in the river's shallows until you found the perfect one. It was flat, about the size of your palm. Its weight like that of a tennis ball. And it had a pretty much triangular shape. Okay, Trap, listen up. Shoto came closer to watch you. Hold with your thumb and middle finger, and firmly hook your index finger along the edge. Like this. You demonstrated. The boy's eyes widened as he watched you explain. It felt weird having your victim be so close to you. Just a few hours ago you shoved his face into the classroom bin, and now he was standing so close next to you that his warm breath was tickling your neck. Your thumb goes on top, not around the edge, and then... You stood up straight and, f and faced at a slight angle. Throw it and try to make it spin, like this! You shouted as you released the stone with a quick snap of your wrist. Wow! exclaimed the other as he watched you skip the stone three times before it finally splashed underwater. Some more after this you two became friends, which was good. Because just a few days later he developed his quirk and it was definitely outclassing yours. 
which created an unspoken respect towards the two of you. That was, until he was missing from class. He never skipped school, and his trash fire of a father sent him to school even if he was sick. And then you saw him approach the school gates, head on, face covered by something. Hey, twerp. Why the long... You paused your sentence as the thing on his face came into view. The left side of his face was completely bandaged up. Face. There was shock and pity in your voice. He didn't acknowledge you and tried to walk past the entrance. Whoa, wait, wait up, twerp! Grabbing his shoulder, you swung him against the wall at the school entrance. He grunted as air was pressed out of his body. And you pushed your face up to his. What happened to you, twerp? I don't want to talk about it. His voice cracked. He tried to act like this didn't affect him. You sighed. Then I make you talk about it. You pushed him away from school grounds towards the river. He didn't struggle. Sit, you ordered. And he plopped down onto the grass that grew next to the river. You crossed your arms and angrily stared at his bandages. Who did that to you? Minutes went by where he was silently sobbing. Eventually you bit your lower lip. It took more willpower than you would be willing to admit, but in hindsight, you're incredibly thankful you did what you did next. You sat down next to him, one arm around his shoulder. No words necessary. After this, the years simply went by, and you strengthened your bond with the now scarred boy. And while you were never invited to his home, you invited him many times. There was lots of laughter and fun to be had. And you even took the pleasure of being with him the first time he drank alcohol. This was until one day, a 15-year-old Todoroki approached you. Hey, man! He shouted happily and you grinned. <laughs> it's rare that Mr. Hot and Cold is smiling like that, he replied. I... I got accepted into UA. Your jaw dropped. UA was the high school to go to. I mean, sure, it was on my dad's recommendation and he wishes I follow his path, but it's such an honor going into that school, you know. You had thrown him a soft smile. I'm sure I can join. They'd never let a wild card like me in. You chuckled darkly. Followed by an uncomfortable silence. <sighs> Look, you began. We both knew from the start this wouldn't last. <laughs> and hey, your heart sank as you pressed out a grin. At least now you'll be teaming up with other twerps like you to become my future savior. Todoroki avoided your gaze and simply said, Oh, Ruin. That stung. But he was right. You were a delinquent, and will most likely end up doing something prison-worthy. Just promise me one thing, pleaded your scarred friend. Promise me that, no matter what, you will never kill anyone. No, you were avoiding his gaze. He sighed in both sadness and disappointment. I guess this is goodbye were his last words before he left. Once he was out of earshot, you allowed yourself to cry. And you silently said, Goodbye. I love you. More to yourself, rather than to him. Your high school years were both a blessing and a curse. Of course, you kept your... This world sucks, so I suck too attitude that you had since your earliest elementary school years. And in a way, you enjoyed being a bully again. You enjoyed many parties, drugs, 
and alcohol, and enjoyed the company of many girlfriends and boyfriends alike. You didn't care who. You just wanted an emptiness that was slowly growing inside you to go away. Just like the thoughts of a certain red and white-haired boy, whose warm smile and calming voice were echoing throughout your dreams. Was he thinking of you too, the way you did? And so the years passed. You tried to avoid any news regarding UA as hard as possible, and you missed many things, but that didn't matter to you. It was like being stuck in a limbo of indifference. That was until one evening you heard your mobile phone ring. Stepping over various empty bottles and trash, you managed to reach it. The voice on the other end of the phone made your heart jump with a jolt of happiness. Happiness you haven't felt in years. Hey, came Todoroki's voice and your lips quivered. His voice had become much deeper than it used to. Uh, are you there? You nodded and then slapped yourself as you realized he wasn't there to see. Yeah, I'm here. You spoke softly. Long time no talking. Why are you feeling so awkward? No, man, I was thinking if maybe you would like to come to our prom. You felt a cold shower wash over you. Trying to save face, your reply was, What? Like some sort of date twerp? For a moment there was silence, as panic spread throughout your body. And then you heard a silent sob. <laughs> no one has called me twerp in years. No, you were the one tearing up. Look, none of the girls here are interested in me, and showing up to prom alone is kind of pathetic. You gave a pained chuckle. So it's a date then, huh? You two fell silent again. 7 p.m. Meet me at the entrance of UA. I can let you in with my student ID. And then he hung up. Unsure of what to say, do or feel, you jumped into the pile of clothes on your floor, looking for anything decent. With a police growl, you pulled out various clothes, among which was that one black leather jacket that you had found in a tiny shop in the mall. Once you were ready, you jumped into your car, and you began driving to the prestigious building of UA. Shoto greeted you with a smile that was sweeter than any dessert you had ever tasted once you parked close to school grounds. And you fell into each other's arms. I missed you, bro. You mumbled into his ear. And you felt him blush into your chest. He was still smaller than you, even after all those years. And despite having grown a few muscles, you felt like you could still break him like a twig. He led you into UA's grounds and explained that he had asked the principal himself if it was okay that you, an outsider, could enter. And this act alone made you feel a little uncomfortable and honored. So, this is where you have been walking to school, huh? You grunted in awe as you looked at the gigantic building. And suddenly, you felt a little underdressed. He nodded. It was quite the humbling experience. I never felt more ready in my life. He smiled. Especially now that you're here. A chuckle escaped your lips and you followed Todoroki into a large gym. Normally we train our quirks there, but... Tonight it's where we, uh, dance and stuff. Todoroki laughed nervously. Once inside the building, you were quickly introduced to the people Todoroki had spent time with the past couple of years. One of which you even recognized yourself. Hey, still rocking that jacket? 
the guy said, and you nodded. With a slight hint of jealousy, Toto asked, You guys know each other? We got these sick leather jackets from the same store in the mall. The boy pointed at himself. Name's Danky, by the way. You gave each other a quick high five, officially making you two jacket buddies. The prom went on, and more and more you realized that a prom at UA was more like in those dumb romance movies, rather than an actual party where people got to say fuck you one last time to their teachers. Not even the punch was spiked. Luckily you had your trusty tin flask with you, and when nobody was looking, half of its contents entered the various punch balls on the table. Knowing this party would blow up any minute now, you managed to maneuver Todoroki outside for a quick smoke. You both sat down on a bench next to the gym and were sharing the rest of your alcohol. <laughs> Can't believe you still got that old thing, said your friend with a content smile. There's something I need to tell you, he began. Since the last time we spoke, I have been thinking about you every day and he paused and blushed. I had dreams about you. Somehow you managed to feel embarrassed. But it could be the alcohol from your flask. I... I think I'm in love with you. For a moment, a beautiful, wonderful moment, the world seemed to stop being made up of just you and him. You had come to terms with your own feelings only after he had left you. And a thought came to you. How long has he been harboring feelings for you? As if to answer your question, he pointed at a scar. Ever since that day, where you were the only one giving me comfort, a tear rolled down his face. I want nothing more than to be with you. Well, that answered your question. Shoto looked at you expectantly and you sighed, making a smile falter ever so slightly. <sighs> a long as time ago, you started. You asked me to never kill anyone. He nodded. I did a lot of bad things in my life. I stole and broke stuff, graffitied obscenity on church walls, uh, that was, by the way, one of my most fun things to do, and I took drugs, like it was a second breakfast. You looked into his eyes, but I never killed. Maybe the occasional fly, but I never killed anyone. Because I too love you, Toto. You two embraced each other, feeling as if letting go would mean another year of being separate. We should go back inside. You whispered into your now boyfriend's ear. I did a really, really bad thing. You chuckled. Back inside was mild chaos. Clearly none of the other students at UA were used to any alcohol at all. With the exception being Denki and a guy who had introduced himself of Kirishima when he first entered the gym. Of course, no one was blacked out, for that you definitely didn't have enough, but everything seemed more carefree. Two of the couples were even making out on the dance area. <laughs> How about the dance? He suggested to Todoroki, and he nodded. And there, dancing under the purple light of the dance floor, you two kissed for the first time. You heard crashing and screaming coming from the house. Worry filled your mind. You feared for your boyfriend's life, but he asked you directly to not intervene. Tapping your fingers on your car's steering wheel, you patiently waited. 
and then the door to the house flung open. Shoto Todoroki, your boyfriend was running, no, jumping down the flight of stairs, separating him from your car. And a large bag on his back. Stop the car! Stop the car! He shouted and you twisted the keys. And just when Shoto reached the passenger door, a giant shape appeared at the door. You gulped. Shoto, when you enter that vehicle, you will never show your face in my house again! Shouted the giant. As an answer, your boyfriend flipped him the bird and sat down on the passenger seat. Punch it! He shouted. And you two were off. Once the house and the giant man were out of view, you both took a deep breath. You sure you want to do this? I can still turn the car around. But Shoto shook his head. No. From now on, it's just you, me, the open road, and whatever the future holds for us. The way he smiled, the way his eyes sparkled when he said that, filled you with feelings of hope and determination only he could conjure. With a confident smile, you turned on the radio. And the song that played was only that. And the only song... And the song that played was one that was awfully fitting for this moment. And you began to sing along. We've been on the run, driving in the sun, looking out for number one. Todoroki joined in. California, here we come, right back where we started from.